Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the lights surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going to get our holiday jams on. This is the second year we've done this. Last year, we revealed our top five holiday jam, uh, jams, not jam, not jam, but jams. But And speaking of jam, Jan's list really encompassed all of the classics, right? She, she, you know, she really had the, she had the Bing Crosby on her list. My list was a little quirkier, I would say. You know, I, I had uh, Christmas wrapping by the waitresses on my list, and uh, uh, which I love and I listened to actually this morning before the podcast because it gets me uh, supercharged. So, you know, in the midst of COVID and, you know, because we really, it's hard to wrap anything into 2020 when you don't think a little bit about COVID because it has affected everyone's life in the entire world. So, you know, it has kind of reframed my whole way I even have been enjoying Christmas music this year. It's kind of interesting. We have Sirius Radio, and this year, Sirius has always had uh, several different Christmas channels that they have. They have like a traditional one, and they have a pop one, and now, this year there's, I swear, I'm not even kidding you when I say this, there's a dozen Christmas channels. There's soul and jazz and country and Hallmark and uh, all kinds of stuff. There is a Mannheim Steamroller channel on there. I love Mannheim Steamroller. Oh, me too. There, Carol the Bells is one of my favorite Christmas. It was on my list last year, as a matter of fact, from um, Mannheim Steamroller. And I love that. But this whole Mannheim Steamroller channel isn't just their music. It's music of the same ilk. And I've really been enjoying it. I listen to it a, a lot. We, My, my sweet pea and I always laugh uh, about when we get in the car. Like, what's going to be the song that you hear in the loop every single time you get in the car? Last <laughs> yeah. Last year it was Santa Baby. It's like if I hear Santa Baby one more time, literally gonna scream, right? Blue um, Christmas with Elvis. That was the year before. Oh, well. um, uh, this year, the song that we hear all the time in the song uh, in the car is "Let It Snow." So it's like every time we get in the car, it's "Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow," and um, uh, we're tired of it. <laughs> 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 Honestly? Great. And it's only the 11th of December. Hello. Jan O'Brien, let's let you jump in. You can start us off. What are your three top Christmas holiday jams 2020? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I went a totally different direction with this. None of them are, uh, I, I wanted to do something different than last year. And I was looking for things that were COVID related or stuff. And so I'm very excited to announce my first pick. <gasps> and I'm going to share this with you. I, let me see if I can share the screen, the application window. Here we go. It is from my absolute, if you can pop it up in there for the people that listen to, uh, I mean, that sure, I'll put all the YouTube down. videos up in our show notes. Mm -hmm. Say again? I said I'll put the YouTube videos of the songs up in yeah, our yeah. show notes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so my favorite band is 21 Pilots, okay? Mm -hmm. And they just dropped this this song and first of all 21 pilots is also on my list for level of concern which was one of the most popular songs created in quarantine one of the things i found so unique in this 20 and we'll i think we'll i'll talk a little bit more about this one the one where we do the wrap up is how artists with huge followings found ways to connect with their with their uh fan base with alternative lives and things that they were doing so people no could get music and, and, and surprise albums like Taylor Swift just dropped another album actually last night her second album in six months that was all recorded in quarantine 21 Pilots put in a song out called Level of Concern which is just an awesome song and it's a quarantine song that's one of the popular songs of the year but they just basically December 8th put this new song out called Christmas Saves the Year and it's awesome you got to go listen to it there's no official video for it because it just came out two days ago. Cool. Christmas Saves the Year by 21 Pilots is my number one. My number two okay. is not a Christmas song. Oh, it's kind of a, it's more of a, it's from um, a, a group of artists and it's called, uh, and I'll just leave it, I won't put it up here. It's called Times Like These and it's a BBC Radio One stay at home live song comp compiled compilation. Uh, that has just a great message in it and I think it's perfect for the holidays and it's really all about um, just what's 
times like these and coming together and so forth. Awesome. And my number three song is a remake of We Are the Champions. The, I know these aren't holiday, but I don't care because that is where I wanted to go. With hey, this is hey, it's this is the COVID um, edition. That's right, it's the COVID edition. So We Are the Champions. Oh my gosh, but go watch the video of Adam Lambert and Queen doing it live, just like uh, the Twenty One Pilots links to those songs where they were on Jimmy um, uh, the Tonight Show with they're all in their locations and they're record and they're doing that video live that's what queen and adam lambert did for we are the champions and it, it has all these shots of healthcare workers in it and they changed the words a little bit oh that's cool that's awesome so those are my three my three cool songs and then the other things i put together for everybody today is if you've been looking for there's a really cool playlist on spotify somebody's just curating it. it's called the sound of virus and it's all these artists who wrote songs in quarantine um, that, uh, that, you know, or maybe change some of the words and so forth. And 40 songs about the coronavirus is a Boston Globe article. That's really awesome. That's how I found a couple of these. So anyway, that's my list. Very cool, Jennifer. I love your list. See, we, I think we switched places this year because mine were a little more not so traditional. Yours were traditional last year. And this year, I think we have switched gears. Because my three songs are, uh, although I wouldn't say as traditional, but they are certainly, they have certainly weathered the test of, of time. The, the, because you know what, a lot of the classic Christmas Eve stuff just is not hitting me this year. It's not resonating with me, but I'll tell you one thing that does. I love this song every year. Um, uh, but uh, for some reason this year, I just think a little bit of the irreverence, a little bit of the crankiness, a little bit of the okay is uh, in there. And that is the Chipmunk song, Christmas Don't Be Late. I still want a hula hoop. I freaking love that song. And oh, I, I like that just, song. It's just, well, who doesn't love that song, right? Uh, that song was actually released in 1961. Uh, it actually won a Grammy Award for Best Engineered Album and a Grammy Award for Best Children's Album that year. So it's a Grammy Award winning song. I didn't really even know that. You know, obviously, Alvin, the, Alvin and the Chipmunks, it was uh, created, written, and sung by Ross uh, Bagnazari, and I believe is how you say his last name. His stage name is David Seville. So from, from the Chipmunks, did you know that he sang all the parts in that? No. Yes, he sings every part. He's Dave, Alvin, Theodore, and Simon. And I didn't know that. Yeah, as a little known, well, it might not be a little known fact, but I don't think it's a well-known fact that he actually did all the voices for that. And that's why it won the Grammy Award for Best Engineered Album, because it was him, all four parts. So um, interesting. And I, I, I freaking love that song. My number two, I don't know why, and this is another song that I, I listen to and I love every year, but I'm telling you, I cannot get enough of this song. Um, and it, I'll give you a, um, uh, a line from it and you can guess the title. You don't need Deck the Halls or Jingle Bell Rock because you can spin a dreidel with Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, both Jewish. A Hanukkah song, a Hanukkah song by Adam Sandler is on my list of holiday jams this year. I cannot get okay. it. The lyrics of this song make me cry. I'm actually going to put the lyrics of all three of my songs in the show notes today because I, if you really look at the lyrics, it makes it much more enjoyable. And, you know, you think you know all the words, but when you really read this song, uh, Hanukkah song, well, no, actually all three of these, really, when you really the look at it. The dreidel song? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let me see. What is the, uh, there's just so many, there's just funny lyrics all the way through that song. So Adam Sandler wins my number two spot for, uh, uh, just once again, a little bit of a reverence, right? Uh, in the thing. And I think that's, uh, kind of just what's happening now. Now, my third song is, oh, by the way, the Adam Sandler song came out in 19, no, 2008 is when actually he did that. I, 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 I we have an old a CD of Saturday Night Live Christmas skits. Oh my God. And, and he actually sang this song on the weekend update. And I was looking at that and it's like, so the guy looks, he looks like he's 12 years old there singing the Christmas, the Hanukkah song is it's awesome. So anyway, I remember seeing that one back when he was, when I was watching Saturday Night Live, uh, Saturday Night Live in 2008. So, all right. My third song um, is from the Grinch. Uh -huh. And I think that also kind of encompasses a lot of what <laughs> feelings that people might be having this year. However, my song I chose is not the Grinch song about the ugly, nasty Mr. Grinch, which, you know, we can always all put someone's face to that. 
maybe, although the end of that changes the Grinch a little bit. And I'm not sure that some of the people we uh, say are Grinchy would change. But my um, favorite song from that show, and I think what really kind of what I have been, it, it kind of just gets me every time I hear it, is the um, the Welcome Christmas song, the one where the Who's come out at the end and they're oh, singing, yeah. you know, singing anyway. You know, the, the, that song ends with them saying, Welcome Christmas while we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. And I think that more than any time in the longest time, probably since 9-11, quite frankly, have we uh, have been in a situation where we really, truly need to come together right and unite and just be be one and be on the same team i'm just telling you i just i love the grinch is that do you love the grinch yeah i've already watched it uh watch the uh i like the original cartoon i love the um the jim carrey obviously version the original right i uh, just watched that again um uh, my other favorite is elf i had i've already watched elf like twice <laughs> because i'm a will ferrell fan so I just, I love the Grinch when, you know, he, he's so happy. He goes and just kind of robs the entire town. He and Max, who is my favorite uh, animated dog, by the way, head back up to Mount Crumpet and they get to the top, you know, and he's all excited. He's talking about finding out how, the, you know, that Christmas is not coming. They're all waking up and he'll know what they do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the who's down in Hooba will cry. Boo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that he simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. However or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means just a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food and the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. And I think that if everybody just kind of has that in their heart, <laughs> this holiday season, we can kind of get through some of this mess that we're going through right now in this country and the world and get through it. Because you know what? You know, yes. you just you just got to do it, people. Yeah, that was a perfect way to end our segment. So I'm telling you, that that is my favorite. Uh, it keeps me going. And it's weird to think that the, the song from The Grinch would be my favorite holiday. Uh, he, had a, he had a transition. He had a transformation. Because you know what he did while he was standing? I'm going to tell you what he did, Jan O'Brien. When he was standing on top of Mount Crumpet, he reflected, he reimagined, and he reconnected with the people in Whoville. And there it is, folks. Boom. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube.